Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial series on creating a Houdini tool that can stack objects into a predefined area. I'm your host, Thomas Tobin, senior technical artist working currently on all things procedural with the Metacast team. Previously, I worked on procedural game pipeline tools at Ubisoft. Let's get started. Following this tutorial, we'll be able to make a Houdini digital asset that can pack a bunch of objects into a defined space in Unreal Engine 5. And then we're going to attempt to pack these objects vertically. This tool could be used to scatter objects anywhere in a world scene and helps to quickly fill out scenes with props. We're going to turn this box brush in Unreal 5 into something like this an organized pile of boxes scattered within this area. The first thing we're going to do within this tutorial series is create a data table. While data tables are not supported in other software, this tool could be easily adapted by using a node such as Object Merge and work in any other DCC or game engine. And we'll demonstrate that quickly later. Let's get started in this series. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a data table. The first question you might have is, what is a data table? A data table is simply similar to a Excel spreadsheet, and it can contain any number of information. The way you create a data table is you need to first create a structure. And a structure basically defines what are the row headings. So we're going to right click down in our content editor. And we're going to go to Blueprints and Structure. You can name this whatever you want. I'm going to just name it blah, 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 and open it up. So you can see just here, we have the ability to add variables, define what information will be in that variable, or what type is the variable. And if we set a string, it doesn't allow you to edit anything else. And this is because the data table is where you input all of this information. So for my structure, I'm going to set up a asset path. We're going to label it here. And that's just by creating a new variable and having our first input as a static mesh. And the second is width. And I'm going to make this a float. The other um, default values I'm going to set are width, length, height, and rotation, and min-max scale. So when we create a data table now, you do this by right-clicking again in your content browser and selecting miscellaneous. It's going to be data table just below data asset. I'm going to create that. And you can create your row structure. And so this is dependent on the structure you created before. So if I selected my blah, 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 and hit OK, a new data table will be created, and these two are now linked. So anything I add to this blah, 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 so if we do hello, and I'm going to set new variable, I can have member var. I will set to my hello again. Sorry, that was the tooltip I was setting. And I'm going to set this to static mesh. So I'm just going to search for that static mesh. And that is the one with the brick. And that's going to give me the hello. And now I can have a default value if you want. And we're just going to recreate this test data table that I've set up before the same formatting. So in the end, your struct should have all of these values. And that is pretty much it. Now our data table, we're going to have three rows. So you can add a row by if I go to that new data table again, simply clicking on add, and this is going to initialize an object. You can see our hello variable has been added here. And it has all the properties down below. For my use case, I'm going to make three different objects that we can stack. So it's going to be a wooden military crate. And these are all mega scanned assets. So if you have mega scans, you can simply grab the same matching objects. 
and the ammo crate and a wooden crate. Now, unfortunately, uh, we can't grab the width, length, and height automatically. So this is just something you have to type out. A quick way I, we have found figuring out this value is if you go to the asset path, so I'm gonna just search for this asset real quickly. And if you hover over, it's a little hard to see, but about middle way down of this pop-up window, there is a field that says approximate size, 41 by 52 by 59. You then just type in 41 by 52 by 59. And we're gonna leave rotation and min-max scale uh, all just default for now and potentially enable those later on. But this is just our asset and we've dragged in our asset into this asset path, as you see. So this contains the path to this asset. So within my folder structure, where does it, where is it located? And it's width, length, and height. This is something we can recreate easily inside Houdini and instance as a test object as the bounding box. Now this would create problems if you were working with objects that were curved or not exactly box shape. I'm just gonna assume for this tutorial series that all your objects are uh, square or rectangular in size. That pretty much concludes creating the data table needed for the tutorial today. The other object you're gonna need to create inside Unreal Engine is a box brush. So the way you create a BSB or a box brush within Unreal Engine 5 is you go to the create window, place actors panel, and we need to go to geometry. So that is this menu over here. And now you can simply drag in a box brush. In order to edit this, you need to go to the activate brush editing mode. So that is the final selection up here. And now you can edit this in any way uh, that you would like. So if I click on this face, let's see if I can extrude. If I want to add an extra face, only works with local coordinates, that's fine. Now, as I drag out, we're editing this in any way we want. So this is gonna be our object that we pack all of our meshes into. I'm going to leave the mesh editing mode. And I have created a simple box brush with this layout as seen here. You can see even up to the edge, I've filleted one of the edges and we still fit into the volume perfectly. So I'm going to assume a couple bits of knowledge here. You need to be able to create a HDA or a Houdini digital asset within Houdini. And then you can simply save out a blank HDA. And this HDA will be what we create all of our um, nodes and any other thing, um, tools. <laughs> Lost the word there. And we're gonna bring this into Unreal. So just by dragging and dropping the tool into Unreal Engine, you can see it is listed as a Houdini asset. If you do not have the step, you'll simply have to follow the tutorial online on installing Houdini Engine into your Unreal. If you have everything initialized correctly, you should have Houdini Engine as a menu at the very top. The final important step to this tutorial, and you'll see how I'm getting a back and forth live update, is I've enabled session sync. This means that anything I do in Unreal will be updated in Houdini, and anything I do in Houdini will be updated real time inside Unreal. In order to do this, I have simply done connect session within Unreal Engine. However, in order to get that to connect to your instance of Houdini, you need to go to Windows, Houdini Engine Session Sync. Ensure that in the parameters section of Unreal, you have named pipe set up. Just ensure that the two softwares are connecting by the same network type. In my case, I've done named pipe and left it as HAPI. With Houdini's Session Sync running, 
you can then go into Unreal Engine, click Connect, and your sessions will be connected. So once we have our Houdini asset within Unreal Engine loaded, it can be a fully empty asset. I'm just starting off with the final product here. Anything you do, if you have the setup again working correctly, I'm going to create a box just to show this off. So we have our box. It needs to have an output node just to know that this is the final out. I'm going to make sure the output index is zero. Close that. Now when we go to Unreal Engine, you can see our box is linked. If I change this to a sphere, we have a sphere and this is all in real time. So I'm going to be building the HDA up from nothing using this HDA that I've already initialized and created. And then you can expose any parameters into the tool like a normal HDA as we go throughout this tutorial. There's not too much that needs to be added, sorry, to this HDA creation. So I'm going to move this output back to the end of the graph. So our final result will look like this. Simply a point cloud defining what each of these points contains. So if I look at the geometry spreadsheet, it should end up looking just like our same data table uh, layout. We have Unreal instance, and this is just referring back to that object so Unreal Engine knows what to scatter. So you can see immediately we've updated again. Within our HDA inside Unreal, the end result should simply be, are we using a data table? And so I'm going to show both processes if you want to do the object merge route or if you want to do data table. And we're going to have a few stacking parameters. It is up to you while we go throughout this tutorial and what you want to expose. I've simply exposed the overall rotation of each of these objects. So if I change that, wait a few seconds, and the objects have rotated, we can change our min max angle rotation our rotation stepping size. So if I set this to something like 45 degrees, you can see all the objects now are alternating back and forth in their direction by 45 degrees or even up to 90. And this should be um, vertical and horizontally lined. And finally, we will have our scales. So we can have the same asset be scaled small to 0 0.2 to two times its size, and we have a step stepping size. So these are just the few parameters I've chosen to uh, promote to the HDA. And as we go, I'll point these out and feel free to add your own as you go. The final part of the tutorial will be a quick demonstration of simulation. You can use this layout and add a quick uh, simulation overlay, which can scatter the objects in this case, completely randomly across the scene, but you could just have it uh, almost throw the objects onto the floor so it looks a little bit more natural than perfectly stacked objects. That pretty much concludes section one of the tutorial series. In the next chapter, we will look at creating the tool in Houdini and getting the first level of asset packing done. In further chapters, we will explore vertical stacking, quick simulation testing, and instancing within Unreal Engine. Hope to catch you soon.